Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? Uh, we have the one, the only, and yes, the legend, Matt, the mortgage guy. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, Mike. It's different to do it on a Friday, but it's, it's just as exciting. Yeah, it, it, uh, first off, you know, congratulations. You were celebrating uh, your son's, I think, his sixth grade graduation. So that's cool. Got some family time in. Uh, all kinds of fun. Yeah, I got, got multiple different graduations. We were worried about not celebrating him enough because it hasn't <laughs> been a hasn't been a normal year. And like he doesn't get to have a ceremony at the school. It was like a drive through. But we've had pool parties, sly park trips, drive through like we've he's gotten celebrated plenty. So he's... OK, good. <laughs> nice work. Nice work, Dad. And yeah. uh, th thank you for making time to do this, uh, you know, this with our channel one rental at a time, because this has been a wild week. For the mortgage industry, for interest rates, for the ten-year, for you know the yield curve flattening, all kinds of just wacky stuff happened this week. And you and I called it last week that we thought rates might peak out at one point six. They got really close at least one day. I think it was one point five seven, one point five eight. Didn't quite hit one six, but they've reversed. All kinds of stuffs going on, crazy. So right, yeah, yeah. Why don't you talk let's... about mortgage market first? What's going on in mortgages? Because you sent me a text the other day, like. Oh my God, they just jumped. Well, so. yeah. And I think that like, you know, you've talked about it plenty on your channel and we've both looked at it and talked about it, how we know that the Fed's words have impact. Yes. Even if they're not taking action, if they're talking about doing something in the future or they're revising when they think they're going to do something in the future, that has a direct impact on mortgage rates. And so- I literally put it in probably a dozen emails last week where I said, hey, just circle them back with you. I know this refinance makes sense. I just want to let you know if I was in your shoes, I would want to get this thing in and locked because next week can be volatile yeah. for this exact reason like we saw. And, and, and we saw the Fed talk about, oh, maybe not 2024, but maybe in 2023, we, we start to buy less and, and rates will tick up because of it. I don't think we need to get into detail because I think you've done a good job explaining it to people where when the fed buys less mortgage backed securities inevitably mortgage rates go up yeah. and so when that happens which it will um it it's going to cause rates to go up if they talk about doing it sooner than what they originally thought rates will start to tick up in response to that i mean exactly. it's the same thing happens in the stock market right yeah. where it's where it's just like if a company expects to do huge things in the next 2 years their stock price might go up. You know, yeah. if they've got great projections, their stock price might go up. And so um, this week was an example of that. And the funniest part, Mike, is that there's a there's a Fannie Mae survey that does like a weekly survey of interest rates. And it just so happened that it came out yesterday on a day where rates, um, for all intents and purposes, were getting worse. And there's blood in the streets, some mortgage folks would say, right? Right. Um, it comes out, but it's a reflection of their survey from the Friday and Monday prior. Yeah. Those two days were like the greatest days in, <laughs> in recent months, right? And so so their survey Thursday is like, hey, our survey of mortgage rates, rates are great, everybody. Yeah. And then, you know, all it, it's so funny how human behavior works and how, um, you know, the average consumer will do something <laughs> and call a mortgage guy like me. Hey, your rates are down. Rates are great. What are you doing? I'm like, which news are you watching? Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. last Friday's news. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you sent me a text. I told people on a daily financial news. It's like blood in the street. He, he doesn't normally do this. Rates just went up uh, big time. So, yeah, it was it was a weird, weird week. I mean, it still continues to be weird. I mean, yeah. I think that I got like a collection of rate worsenings from different lenders over Wednesday and Thursday. Um, yesterday afternoon, I might have got a betterment. This morning, I feel like I might have got a betterment. And like you said, the the 10 years down to 144, it's it's so much wacky stuff that it's hard to predict, except for to if you want to be accurate, and I'll and I'll go on record saying this, I predict volatility. <laughs> and <laughs> and I, I, I can almost guarantee that, right? And yeah, so yeah, well, it, yeah. It, I think that's a safe bet. Yeah. And and I think if somebody wants to take something from this conversation, take that whether you're looking at a refinance or purchase, you know, 
we have no idea what's coming in the future. So yeah. on refinance, if you like it, lock it is a really good piece yeah. of advice that me and my team have been given people. And um, it just surprises the heck out of me. I have conversations day in and day out where people are like, oh yeah, I don't know why I'm still paying mortgage insurance. I don't know why I still have paying a 4%. Get your application and docs in, let's refinance you because I don't know what's happening next week. Yeah. You know, the the Fed or the different people who are part of the Fed that do the dot plots and and they think that they're going to do things sooner. A couple things get said and then they're talking about what they're going to talk about. Um, and, yeah. and it's a quarter worse for you as the consumer. And that quarter on $400,000 is a thousand bucks a year. Yeah, it's real know? money. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things to take away from this. I think your rate, if you like it, lock it is the right idea. Could rates go lower? Yeah. Could they go higher? Yeah. Um, but if you like it, lock it. I mean, rates on the 30 year, they do really do have an artificial floor because banks have to make a spread. Banks have to make a certain amount of money. So, I, you know, to think that they can go much, much lower is it's probably, probably unlikely. Uh, also, just talking about the 10 year and what the Fed is saying, they came out with some prize announcements Wednesday. And now I don't know if you saw it this morning, but um, let me get his name right. James Bullard, uh, St. Louis Fed said that rates are like, they're likely to do a rate interest rate rise this year, 2021. Oh, no, I'm sorry, 2022. Yeah, 2022. Wow. So even earlier than Wednesday's 2023. So 23 was, was, was and, Wednesday. Yeah, now, now you're saying Bullard, Bullard is talking 2022. 22. Yeah, which is what I've been calling for. And I think that, I think the Fed is just walking us slowly in. And I think that's what they're trying to calm the market. Right. Yeah. I think most reasonable people that looked at it were just like, how can you say that you're just going to keep doing this for three years? You're art you know, that just seemed like a really long time horizon. So like you said, a little slow walk, but uh, maybe 23, uh, maybe 22. Ooh, and so, yeah, yeah they'll, they'll it's slowly big. walk it back. I think it's, it's just, it's a tough place to be between, you know, do we do it now and, and might feel a little pain because of it, you know, do we keep stretching it out? And then maybe the pain is even worse because, you know, we've, we've done this for so long and we've, mm -hmm. we've had this, this steroid. Yeah. I've there's going to be a hangover. It's just how bad you want the hangover. Right. Yep. It's, it's for sure. Hurt. The other thing that I think is interesting and I got a sense from you, but I wanted to ask you about is we talk about rates. That's obviously part of the picture, but I think there's something going on in the lending market. Uh, Fannie, Freddie, FS, whatever it's called, FB or whatever the hell it's called, financial service, whatever it is. I think Protection you're Bureau or there something. you go. I the think CFPB, yeah. CFPB, yeah. I think, I think banks are getting more conservative now uh, than they just were a month or two ago. I, you, want, seeing... you, you want to hear a hot off the press, Matt, the mortgage guy team story? Yes, because I, I'm sensing it, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's Friday morning and I just did a quick little pipeline review of my production manager and we had a certain file that, you know, we put it in an automated system. The automated system says approve eligible. And so we had this file where there's a lot of moving parts. There's debts to be paid off. There's income and how it's calculated from the underwriter, right? And so we had the file input and we had approve eligible with their back end of 43.6. I think that was it. And their income was calculated different. Some, some internal things happen as the file's moving through underwriting. Underwriter says, hey, we're 46%. So we're no longer approve eligible. Mm. So what we do as lenders is say, okay, how do we get the debt ratio back down to where it was to fix it, to get approve eligible again? Okay. So, oh, there's a $1,700 balance on that credit card. We'll pay that off through close. Oh, you know, there's this that should be omitted because that was a card that was already paid off. So we get it back down to 43 and a half, Mike. Mm -hmm. It's not approved eligible anymore. The system done changed. And so wow. it's, 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 it's not me guessing or me thinking maybe Fannie and Freddie are getting tighter. It's me saying 100% certainty, Mike, the same file. The same profile, the same client had an approved eligible two weeks ago, not approved eligible today. My processor was looking for anything he can do. And he said, I'm going to try to see what other debts we can pay off and, and whatnot. I'm likely to have to get that under 40 to get it to approve now. Wow. Because it's, it's the, 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 the algorithm is being tightened. I mean, it's, 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 
it's it's here. And, I, and me and you had a couple examples from other clients, but when I see it in my day-to-day business yeah. where the same client, you know, before it was like, hey, I used to get more approved eligibles up to 48. Now I got to be under 45. Or I used to get them at this. That's one thing to have and the same as that file. client. Yeah. Right. Now it's a, a, a specific file where for sure, because, because in other cases you would say, oh, maybe DU doesn't like it. And it's got to be under 45 because their credit score is 696. Or maybe it's because they don't have any reserves. Or maybe it's because of that. Now it's like this same credit profile, the same exact client. Apples to 43 apples. and a half in end of May, approve eligible. 43 and a half mid June, approve ineligible. Yeah. The banks are tightening. I'm, I'm again, I, the beauty of having this YouTube channel and, you know, thousands of students as you hear about it, it's like, Ooh, and then you can start talking about it. Right. Again, I think the banks are getting tighter. And again, I don't know this for sure, but I'm going to guess that was an owner occupied purchase or a refi maybe. Refi. Yeah. Owner yeah. occupied refi. So it was owner oc, which is supposedly the easiest thing to do today. I mean, it wasn't like it was an investment loan where, you know, suddenly the investors are, cause I went through that, right. Where the investors are the dirty word and it doesn't matter if it's LTV at 50%, right. We're not, we're not saying yes to any investors. And we saw Fannie and Freddie or whoever it is say, we're going to do less investment loans. This is an owner oc, owner occupied, tighter criteria. The system is changing. And I don't know why. It's interesting. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't, and again, you're using the system you're referring to. People need to realize that's an automated system that all mortgage brokers or at least most mortgage brokers use to basically realize if you're wasting your time or not. Right. Right. Uh, well, I mean, to if, if we don't get an approved eligible, the loan doesn't close because yep. the lender who's closing these loans is selling it off in the secondary market. They're, they're going to have that approved eligible in their file. It's like anything else where it's like, yeah. we need bank statements. We need pay stubs. The one thing that I'll add that might be just a guess of mine sure. is that all this talk about taking Fannie and Freddie out of conservatorship, this might be kind of a cleaning of the books. Oh my like, God. let's make sure we have really clean files and really strong performing numbers. Because if you go, you know, dude, that's, and, and that trying- soup is made, man. These freaking loans are <laughs> months and quarters old, but you could be right. Maybe they're just trying. Well, to I mean, them. imagine though, if, if, yeah, if you're a couple of years out and you're just like, look at like none of this stuff defaults, this is the cleanest uh, stuff in the world. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, 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 and maybe, you know, like you said, some of the soup is made, but if, if we tighten up and, and numbers yeah. are a little bit cleaner because the stuff that's. Yeah. You can only control the, last- the new stuff, not the old stuff. Right. 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 And really the old stuff is, is pretty solid stuff. Yes. It's all got equity. <laughs> Everything's going up. So yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. So yeah, I think, um, uh, I guess, I don't know if you saw this, right? So first Bullard says rates are going up. Wells Fargo now says the 10 year is going to be over 2% by the end of the year. They're actually calling for 2.2. What wow. the hell would that do to 30 year mortgages? Up. That's my prediction. Oh. <laughs> but no, I'm a genius. Just, yeah, let's just do the spread, right? So let's say let's say the 10 years at 1.5, just for easier math. It goes to 2.2. That's seven, that's 70 basis points. Would it would a 30-year mortgage probably go up one full point? Because it's not it's not a one-to-one ratio. Right. You know, I I'm trying to think back of when we were near that two percent and where rates might have been. Ah, can um, you look that up and let me know? I'll put that in tomorrow's daily okay. financial news. Yeah. Last gonna... time the 10 year was at 2%. What were rates? I would love to know that. Right. Yeah. And I want, there's got to be some charting somewhere where it's like the 10 year and mortgage rates um, over time. Um, I don't know. You're the mortgage guy. You figure it okay. out. Okay. All right. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I love passing off action items. I'm not. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, a delegate and elevate. Good job, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Score. <laughs> Somebody Wait. on my team is going to be looking that up. There you go. Delicate downhill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, do me a favor. If people are in California paying PMI, they need to reach out. If people have been uh, you know, purchased years ago, they should really do a rate and term. There's lots of reasons for people in California to be calling you. How do you want them to do that? How do they want them to reach out? Matt at mathandmortgageguy.com. If you send an email there, give me as much information as you can. Hey, I bought three years ago. I bought it at this. My credit score is about this seeing if it makes sense to refinance. Because just with a mortgage statement, a guess of your credit score and an idea of what you're trying to do, I can in three minutes say, let's dig in. There might be something here. Or you know what? You're in good shape. Leave it alone. Right. And a lot of people are going to send up, send over stuff, 3.875, 125 in mortgage insurance. What you said about mortgage insurance, I've, I've got to make a video on it because 
things have gone up 30% in two years. Yeah, so people exactly. that bought in 19, if you have mortgage insurance Get and you're out. in a, a market like 90 plus percent of markets is appreciated, you, you shouldn't be paying mortgage insurance. Rates are lower yeah. and equity is higher. Yeah. So you're going to be able to lower your rate, remove mortgage insurance. That's, that's yeah. the double whammy that almost always results in, yes, this refi makes sense. So if you're in California, Matt at mattthemortgageguy.com. If you're outside of California, greatmortgagebroker.com is a quick link, six questions. You put in your state and it connects you with somebody who's licensed in your state. The one caveat to that is if you're looking for fancy loan programs, they're not the ones you probably hey, email me. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and I've connected um, some of your uh, listeners to specific folks. You know, awesome. you, you're looking for a construction loan in Oregon. You're looking for this and there. And sometimes I have somebody, sometimes I don't. But um, if I do, I'm happy to help. There you go. Again, folks, let me say it one more time. If you were paying PMI in California and you bought in 2019, reach out to Matt, the mortgage guy. He's going to save you some money. So thank you very much, buddy. Episode number two, folks, we're going to talk about the slowing housing market and what we both think will cause it. Yes, we see a slowdown coming, not a crash. Thanks, buddy.